Hello and welcome. This is a follow-up to my continuing series of redrawing all the 151 original Pokemon. In this video, we're going to be going over Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard. All right, so my thoughts going into this is I want to do something a little bit more advanced. I had isolated the drawings of Bulbasaur, Ivasaur, Venusaur in my previous drawing, and I want to create something more of a combined scene where they're all interacting with each other. Again, this creation is going to be done on my iPad, doing some digital art. My personal opinion on these Pokemon is that a lot of people seem to think that Charizard is their favorite Pokemon and they're wrong. Their opinion is just objectively wrong. Their starter Pokemon should not be Charizard, he's actually the worst. And if you don't know this, in the original game, Charizard was basically, or Charmander, was basically like selecting hard mode. The way they had designed the game was to have the different starters be different difficulty settings. So Bulbasaur was actually the easier mode because he was stronger and more capable than the other ones. Squirtle was kind of like your mid-range, medium, and then Charizard, the worst Pokemon, was the hardest to train, hardest to level up, which is actually, you can see that in the show because if I remember right, I believe Ash had the most amount of trouble trying to chain, uh, train his Charmander in turning into a Charizard, and from what I recall, the Charizard didn't even respect him by the time he evolved. Just goes to show, worst starter out of the original set. Ooh, I'm serving up some harsh brands to all you Charizard lovers out there. I stand by it. Worst starter. Like, if you think about it, you can even think about the beginning gyms, and you first have to go against the rock gym. Charmander sucks against that. Next one, Misty. Even worse, because it's water type. Versus you pick something like Bulbasaur, the better starter, destroys Brock, destroys Misty, destroys the electric gym with Surge or whatever his name was. And then by the time you get to the fourth gym, you already got enough Pokemon that you don't have any problem from there. All right, enough messing around. Let's just get to the drawing already. All right, here you could see me redraw Charizard's arm a couple times because I kind of realized during that process that I was screwing it up and it didn't really make any anatomical sense. Uh, then I started putting the hand resting on the arm, but later I changed that because I kind of felt like it made it look as if Charizard was just laying on the ground in the background. But that probably would have not been the case when you come to the later part that you'll see where I draw the background. And right around here, while I'm drawing Charmeleon, I was looking at the arm, and I didn't really like the way the silhouette looked, so I, you can see that I shifted it over so there wasn't as much of an overlap, and I feel like it made the dynamic position look a lot better.
When I start putting in color, you'll notice in the top left area here in a sec, right there, uh, I put in little color swatches that I can go back to um, as I didn't create a whole palette. I don't know, I could, I could create a palette within the tool, but I kind of like having them right there and I use the eyedropper to go back and pick up the colors or where I need it. Also at this part, while I'm filling in the color, you'll start to notice that I kind of go around the edge of the character. And then what happens is I just bucket fill in the rest of the color, which makes it a lot easier to get the edges clean and also not have to spend too long trying to fill it in all the way. While I was coloring the characters, I did have in mind that I was going to have this fire become a very prominent part of the lighting. So I had already added the yellow effect, accounting for this section where I start adding in the huge fire blast coming from Charmander. And right around here, you can see that I start painting in the foreground and background to fill up the scene more. All right, this part is gonna look a little weird because I start penciling in these scales one by one on Charizard, which is something I used to do when I would draw dragons from a long time ago. And I figured I would try and bring that back and see how it plays out. And then by the time I get the leg filled in, I decided it didn't really work and I wasn't feeling that. So I just said, screw it. I'll use an entire texture brush and fill it in. <laughs> By adding in the extra little blades of grass that kind of overlap around Charmander's feet, I felt like it really helped merge the characters with the environment, making it a unified image. All right, so there you have it. I am pretty happy with this one as well. Uh, I like the combined scene. Um, the lighting effect was a big one for me, what I was trying to create in the scene. I'm happy with how the glow came out across the entire thing. I envisioned this to be kind of like a family type scenario where you have the Charmander who is the youngest child and is trying to take on the older brother type character being Charmeleon who's just kind of looking away, just nonchalant, uh, pushing off the fire like it's no big deal. And then in the background you have the Charizard who's the parent, whether it's the mother or the father, whatever you want to see there, um, overseeing the combat. And the Mostly in my drawing of Charmander, I would say it's pretty much the same, except his crazy ass bulbous eyes, which I really get a kick out of. Like he's really just straining to put in the biggest fire blast that he's got. And it's still not enough to do anything to the, the sibling Charmeleon. You can also see at the bottom area, I tried to put in some charred grass. Uh, really adding to the environment and putting them in the world. Another thing as a side note, something I always think about when I look at Charmander is I remember in the anime, the show, there was an episode where they delved into the concept of how Charmander works and the fire on his tail, or her tail. And if the flame were to go out, Charmander would die. It's not just a knockout, a KO, bring him to the Pokemon Center. Charmander would die if the fire were to go out. I seem to remember that being quite impactful when I was a kid because it still sticks into my head and I haven't watched the show in decades.
there was like a scene where Charmander was in the rain trying to hide from it and the flame kept getting smaller and smaller, really threatening their life. As far as my depiction of Charmeleon in this piece, I would say it's mostly straightforward to what the original stuff is, other than I kind of made that horn thing on the back of the head a little lumpy and saggy, kind of gross. Something I find weird in the design of the Pokemon in general is that the middle evolution Charmeleon is a very different color being red and then it kind of reverts back to the original orange color that Charmander starts with. If you look at the art, the official art, they are almost identical to each other and for some reason in the middle evolution Charmeleon just turns red but then goes back. I don't get it. The other thing I did with Charizard that I'm pretty happy with is that in the wings there's a bunch of holes in uh, damage on the wings, like it's been through some stuff and it's seen some battle and gotten some scars as you can see on the edges of the wing. Then from there you got the background which isn't anything super crazy or special but I like it. I think it brings it in to feel like they're in the world and this is something that's just happening out there in the wild. I'm not entirely too sure how this will progress and how I combine the Pokemon that I draw in the future. The beginning ones are easy because a lot of the Pokemon as you go sequentially through, they are direct evolutions of each other. Um, I don't know how I'm going to combine them into a singular scene when I get to the later stuff, because in the later projects you have uh, just single Pokemon like Jinx or Electabuzz that are clearly not related to each other. Um, it'll be interesting to see what I come up with in the future on that one for combining them. Speaking of which, if you want to see what I come up with in the future, you better subscribe to this channel. You know what? I don't even need to tell you that because I already know you did. And you probably already hit the like button, so I don't even need to tell you that. You, I know you did. I know you hit that like button.